Hey, hey, it's Dana the Gypsy Psychic. Are y'all ready for another message? Come on in, get comfortable, put your feet up, get your blanket, get your pillow, get you something to eat, something to drink, something to smoke. Throw it up on the big screen if you want to, put in the earbuds, kick back and relax because we're going to unpack some psychic messages. If you're new to the channel, it's going to work the way that it always works. I'm going to shuffle and pray. I'll lay out at least 15 cards. I'm going to talk about it as I clarify it and sew together a story. Okay, now let's jump in and see what these cards have to say today. Hey Taurus, it's Dana, the Gypsy Psychic. What's going on? How are you? How's the Bull Tribe doing? Oh, oh, Bull Tribe, right on. We're going to do a reading for you today. Going to do a reading for you today. I have no idea what it's going to be about or how it's going to work out, but we are fixing to find out, you guys. We're fixing to find out. So, I have been doing well. I've been doing very well. It's a little hot these days, so I uh, am doing some inside stuff because my poor pony, she can't ride when it's so doggone hot because she's got to carry my fat butt around. <laughs> so I am inside. These days, I go see her, of course, and spend time with her, but I don't ask her to do anything strenuous because it's just too dang hot. Anywho, I am uh, doing all right, doing all right, doing all right. Let's see what's about to come up for the bull gang, all right? The Taurus tribe. Let's see what's going on. Give me just a second to get these cards situated one more time. We'll channel a message and see what's happening. Let's do it. Spirit. Source, universal energy. I have the collective of Taurus with me on the ground here. Hold on. I have the collective of Taurus with me, Spirit. And they want to know what you know. What do you know about the specific Taurus that needs whatever it is that's about to be said here? What do you know about them, their lives, and their future, Spirit? What's coming towards Taurus? What do they need to look out for? What do they need to look forward to? And most importantly, how do they navigate the coming situations and circumstances of their lives for their very best and highest good? Spirit, please use me as a clean and clear vessel to not only interpret these messages, but to explain them as well. Please tell me where the stopping point is for this particular Taurus. I will cut three times and I'll pull straight from the top. What is it? that <laughs> this Taurus needs to know and understand where is, ah, right there feels good, the stopping point. All right, that feels really good. All right, you guys ready? Let's do it. Let's go. One, two, three, and three. Bottom of the deck, the two of pentacles in reverse, imbalanced, the devil in reverse, uh, releasing some kind of limiting thoughts, beliefs, the ten of wands in reverse that are a burden and a struggle, the king, I'm sorry, the ace of swords getting some kind of clarity, and the star, your path, your purpose, the ten of cups, and the high priestess. Fantastic. All right. First card out is the hanged man. Oh, you guys need to see these. I forget. Y'all need to see these cards, right? First card out is the hanged man. New perspectives. Surrendering, the fool, brand new beginning, brand new journey. These seven of cups in reverse. Uh, diversionary tactics, maybe. This is sometimes about, you know, uh, illusion a little bit to the wheel of fortune, a turning point, and the sun in reverse, not seeing clearly. Not seeing clearly that there is an injustice happening here. The princess of wands in reverse takes away your enthusiasm, possibly the moon in reverse, coming to terms with something. The eight of swords in reverse, a new perspective. The three of wands in reverse to your blockages. The nine of pentacles standing in your power. The five of wands conflict. The nine of wands in reverse. Ah. We'll see what that's about. The alchemist in reverse, an inability to manifest. The Emperor in reverse, maybe out of control somehow. The Nine of Swords in the mind. The Empress in reverse ain't doing it right. 
to the Prince of Wands, some inspired action, the Princess of Pentacles, the Seven of Swords, and Death to the Four of Pentacles and Judgment in Reverse to the Chariot. Fantastic. Ace of Cups in Reverse to the Prince of Pentacles to the Ten of Pentacles. The Lovers in Reverse to the Princess of Swords and the Eight of Cups. Interesting. We'll take those as well. That mindset as well. The King of Wands in Reverse. The Prince of Swords in Reverse. The Queen of Wands in Reverse. And the Eight of Wands. Movement, action, and change to the world. Fantastic. Now, a couple of things y'all need to know about me before we get started here is I'm told that I have a propensity to be inappropriate. I don't quite understand it, but apparently some of the things that I say and do are just shocking to other people. So, word, I have a propensity to be inappropriate. I most likely will swear and I will probably smoke my vape on camera. If any of that bothers you, this neighborhood is just too rough for you and you need to head on down the road a little bit, okay? Rainbows and unicorns are just around the corner. All right, if you want the truth, this is where you need to be. If I offend your ego, uh, then so be it. All right, first card out is the Hanged Man sets the tone for everything to the Three of Swords coming to terms with some kind of grief, sorrow, and pain, followed by the Queen of Swords. Okay, this brings you to the Fool. Oh, look at that, to the Nine of Pentacles in reverse. This brings you to the Fool. Brand new beginning, brand new journey, brand new direction of your life. What is this fool about right here? What is this brand new beginning, this brand new journey? What is the direction of this particular Taurus's life? What are you trying to get them to understand here? What else? What else? What is the fool? You're not going to tell me what the fool is? All right, it just is what it is then. All right, let's move on. So the, so oh, look at that, the King of Pentacles, fantastic. So the Seven of Cups, uh, Seven of Cups in reverse, no less. This card is about, um, I think, illusion. It's also about emotional diversion. Um, what's the problem with the Taurus here with this emotional diversion? What is the problem? The Seven of Pentacles and the Page of Wands in reverse. All right, to the Wheel of Fortune, and I cannot make this up, you guys, the Wheel of Fortune, wow. The Wheel of Fortune. Okay. And the world, tell me where the world is leading Taurus. Tell me where the world is leading Taurus. The Eight of Wands, movement, action, change, direction, Direction to the Nine of Cups. I cannot make this shit up. I cannot. I cannot. I cannot. Woo-wee. Look at that. To the Two of Cups. Fan-freaking-tastic. All right, Taurus. Let's dive in and see what this is all about. All right, you guys. Let's make some sense out of all of this. So the Hangman is the first card out. It sets the tone for absolutely everything. This hangman is about taking a step back, reevaluating a situation, and coming to terms with a new perspective. This new perspective is going to cut you loose from the tree. It's also hand in hand with kind of surrendering. It's kind of kind of about your 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 free will being reassigned. Okay, so take a step back. Get a new perspective. Cut yourself loose from the tree that you have been hanging in for so long. What's the new perspective that you need to get? Well, the three of swords in reverse. Coming to terms with some kind of grief, sorrow, or pain that you are carrying in your mind. Okay? Coming to terms with the grief, the sorrow, and the pain that you are carrying in your mind. It's about forgiveness, understanding, and acceptance. The Queen of Swords making some serious, serious decisions about what it is you are carrying. This grief, the sorrow, and this pain is being carried in your mind. The Queen of Swords is here to disseminate it, to, to, to hack it apart and put it where it goes. She's the cleaner, right? She's, she's, she, she puts things where they go. 
to the nine of pentacles in reverse because this mentality of grief and sorrow and pain is holding you back. Nine of pentacles in reverse is a card about um, an overinvestment. okay? It's about a waste of time. You are wasting some very, very precious time that you have on this planet being all wrapped up in your mind about shoulda, coulda, wouldas, or pain from the past. The Fool. The Fool comes in and talks about a brand new beginning, brand new journey, a new direction. It's a leveling up of your spirituality. It is, it is bouncing in a completely different direction. And this card says that Source has a different direction for your life but you must first get rid of what it is that you are ruminating on in your free will that is not in your best and highest good. Let go of it, get a new perspective, slice and dice it, and put it where it goes so you can embark upon a brand new beginning and a brand new journey in your life. Where is it leading you? Well, to the King of Pentacles. For some people, this King of Pentacles is a mate. I hate to do a buzzkill here, but we are talking about a love relationship that is going to be um, presented to you, okay? The Fool and the King of Pentacles, as far as Taurus personally is concerned, the King of Pentacles is about having a sense of security. It's about control of your own personal life. It's about personal power, abundance, uh, ambitions, worldly success, long-term goals. So where is this fool taking you? Where is the new beginning and the new journey of your life taking you? Well, it's taking you to a place of great success and the fulfillment of some kind of important long-term goal that you have in your life. Maybe you want to be in some kind of committed domestic partnership with someone, and this journey is going to take you there. However, the Ten of Wands is that you are carrying a burden that is weights around your ankles. This fool cannot bounce out when he has the burden of this grief and sorrow and pain that you are carrying in your mind about something, it cannot take you to where you need to go because your free will is not paying attention. Your free will is focusing on the shoulda, coulda, wouldas instead of the will be's and the future. Seven of Swords in reverse says break free from this futile mindset to the two of wands in reverse because your future cannot be built upon it to the four of pentacles in reverse what is the root of everything here is some kind of self protection some kind of this card is about greed and the sense of well-being okay you cannot bounce into this new beginning in this new journey of your life while you are still locked down in some kind of self-protective mentality because of something that has happened to you in your life. Seven of Cups in reverse. This card talks to us about illusion, okay? Illusion and diversionary tactics. Um, there is some kind of belief system that you have that is keeping you from, again, I mean, I know I just said the same thing, but it's keeping you from a new journey in your life. The Seven of Pentacles comes on top of it and says you need to take a step back, reflect and assess and consider how it is you're building yourself. What are the pieces and the parts of your life that you are building? This card is about reflecting and assessing and looking at your own motivations and, and taking inventory to the Page of Wands in reverse because the way that you're doing it now is causing a lot of pessimism. So you are super pessimistic, possibly about love, super pessimistic, pessimistic about relationships, about um, men or women. You're just like, you're just, you're just like, ugh. it just, I just, this experience that I had in my past back here has left such a bad taste in my mouth that I do not even remotely want to engage in some kind of romantic relationship, although your soul craves it. Okay. All right. Wheel of fortune to the wheel of fortune. 
When does the Wheel of Fortune begin to move for you? Well, the Wheel of Fortune is directly rooted, directly rooted in self-realization. And the second that you come to the self-realization that you are ruminating in your subconscious mind on saltiness, saltiness from your past and come to terms with it, is the second that the wheel of fortune starts to turn in, in the direction of your destiny. This is about a huge, gigantic turning point. It is about the divinely orchestrated steps of your path. And both of these Wheel of Fortunes are right here. Both of these are saying the exact same thing. The universe is ready, willing, and able. Right now, as we stand, right this very second today, to put you on the path of fortune in your life. To put you on the path of your soul's destiny. But your free will is blocking it. They cannot and will not intervene in your free will. And as long as your free will keeps you in this saltiness over here, the longer the universe just sits in suspended animation waiting for you to break the bubble and grab onto what it is that is your destiny. The sun in reverse, you're not seeing very clearly right now, temperance in reverse, that you're all imbalanced. You're leaking out the bottom. If all four elements, the temperance card is about the four elements of the human nature, the mind, the emotions, the desires, and the sense of well-being. They're all represented in the tarot. When it's in the upright, all of these are flowing relatively, relatively equal to one another. And when they're flowing relatively equal to one another, anything that's added to the mix actually flows over. So if you have, if you have a peaceful mind, if you have desires that are, that are pointed towards growth and development instead of ego gain, if you have emotions that are stable and fulfilled, and if your sense of well-being and your sense of security is, is level, then anything else that's added to it causes it to overflow onto everyone and everything around you. Right now, you particularly in this top row have a leak in your mind. In the bottom row, you have a leak in your emotions. That's why temperance is in reverse. You're not, you're not balanced because your mind is wrapped around some kind of pain from your past. And as long as your free will keeps you out of balance, the universe cannot divinely orchestrate the steps of your path. They cannot intervene in your free will. What you're not seeing clearly is that you are standing in your own way of your destiny. Wow, what's going on here? Well, there's an injustice. Was there an injustice in your past? Yes, it's right underneath this whole chunk of cards right here that talks about some kind of pain that you need to get over. Was there an injustice? Sure, validated. Injustice happened to you. However, the true injustice of your life is you not being accountable for your path and your purpose. That's the true injustice of your life. The Princess of Wands in reverse, the pessimism that this situation in your past has caused your perception of your future to be is the injustice to your life. The Four of Cups talks about contemplation and reevaluation. See, this card, in this card, this guy is staring at the Three Cups. Three is about initial achievement, right? You think whomever this is for, you think you got this nailed down and that you're over this. But these cards are telling me you are not over this. Does it mean you walk around in your consciousness dwelling on this day in and day out? Maybe, but probably not. See, I'm a channeler and this is someone's deep subconscious mind. And in your deep locked away subconscious mind, you still have this pain that's ruminating. 
You think you've dealt with it with the Three of Cups, but the Hand of Source is offering you the Fourth Cup. And what they're saying is take the information that we're giving you because it will bring stability to your emotional processes and they need you to have stability in your emotions in order for you to be able to step into the journey of the fool. What is the information that they're giving you? Well, they're giving you a heads up that there is a huge love relationship coming to your life. They're giving you a heads up that they're trying and trying and trying to, to bring to you what your soul truly desires so you can be full and overflowing. But they can't add this to your life when you are leaking out the bottom. Understand? The moon, big, gigantic, huge internal struggle, usually between that which you know to be true and that which you do not accept as the truth. Something about this situation up here um, you refuse to accept as the truth. Perhaps what you refuse to accept as the truth is this wasn't meant for you in the first place and you made a bad choice. Perhaps you're refusing to accept your responsibility in the injustice that has occurred. And you are, my friend, 50% responsible for any relationship that fails. You are. Because in your humanness, you chose wrong. Because in your humanness, you think that it should have been one way and it was another. And that is a stubborn free will. The Nine of Wands comes on top of this and talks to us about resilience, persistence, fighting the good fight. This card is about spiritual strength. And what they're saying in this card is be resilient and persistence to tap into your spiritual strength so it can point you in the direction of acceptance and understanding for what happened in the past so it doesn't keep lingering subconsciously in your present. What is it that you got to come to terms with? Well, the Ace of Cups in reverse. Hurt feelings, repressed emotions, something that you have not let go yet. The moon in reverse and the center of your reading. The moon in reverse, just like this moon over here, right? Over here, the injustice is you not recognizing what the truth of a situation is. The moon in reverse in the center of your reading is about coming to terms with that. Come to terms with your accountability. Look, the king of swords. Come to terms with your accountability. Take accountability. Um, um, the king of swords is all about responsible decisions. Just like that queen of swords up there, right? Disseminating the whole situation chopping it up and putting it where it needs to go so it's not blah, 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 all over your life. Come to terms with it. Five of Wands in reverse. So you can have an increased focus on your goals. Stop avoiding the responsibility, your responsibility of your bad choices in your life. Come to terms with it. Close it out and look towards the future, the Page of Pentacles, because this tills up the ground by which to sow seeds of new beginnings and new well-being and new prosperity in your life. This sows the seeds for the sun, for you to see clearly the path to happiness, success, and vitality. Eight of Swords in reverse. Stop being all tied up in your head and get a new perspective about the whole situation. This was not meant for your future. It just wasn't. The Three of Wands in reverse. Three of Wands in reverse talks about obstacles to your long-term goals. What's the problem? Well, we got these two Wheel of Fortunes right here trying to spin in your favor, trying to show you the path of your future. And here you are with a lack of foresight, creating obstacles to your own goals, standing in your way of what it is that you truly want. What is it blocking? Well, there's some kind of communication to the lovers that is uh, waiting to come into your life. 
but the universe is not going to give it an opening to come into your life while your free will is still stuck on the coulda, shoulda, wouldas of life. It's true. There is a significant, divinely orchestrated relationship right on the other side of this bubble, right on the other side of your reality that you are creating in your mind. There is a significant love opportunity right there, just waiting for you to reach through and grab it. The Nine of Pentacles. Come to terms with yourself. Come to terms with yourself. Poppy. Come to terms with yourself. Do the work that needs to be done to be successful in your sense of well-being. Why? Ten of Cups in reverse. Remember, it came out sideways. Ten of Cups in reverse says you are inhibiting your own peace and happiness. To the Ten of Cups in the upright. Pull your shit together and the Ten of Cups pours into your life. How you do that? The devil in reverse. You release some limiting beliefs. Release yourself from a toxic vein in your life. What's the toxic vein in your life? Ruminating on your humanism. Ruminating on it should have, it could have, it would have if only this other person didn't do what it is that they did. Whether it's uh, love, work, family, whatever. But ruminating on it, right? If only this other person wouldn't have done what they had done, things would be just fine. But the truth of the matter is, if only you wouldn't have chosen in your flesh understanding of what it is your ego wants, perhaps this wouldn't have happened to you in the first place. Release your limiting beliefs and detach yourself from a toxic vein in your life, yourself. The five of wands, because it only creates conflict. Conflict, conflict, conflict all over the place. The Page of Swords. Plant new seedlings of thoughts in your mind. Queen of Cups in reverse. And come to terms with your broken heart, your broken feelings, your lack of self-worth. Whatever it was that this situation created inside of you, you must come to terms with it. The Queen of Wands. And posture yourself for success. Posture yourself to be fired up, fire energy, the queen of wands. Posture yourself to be fired up about the, the pursuit of achievement and success. Know that you are capable and powerful in your soul to achieve what it is that you want to achieve in your life if you stop making decisions from your humanness. Three of Pentacles. It leads you to teamwork and collaboration with a partner that you are going to build what it is you truly want to build in your life. Strength in reverse, but you must overcome a weakness. Strength is a card about courage. How do we gain courage? Well, we go through scary situations and we get strong from it. Strength in reverse says that this is a weak point for you. It's a weak link in your whole future and you must overcome it. What's the problem? The nine of wands in reverse. That's the problem. This is about being hesitant, defensive, um, not wanting to engage in another relationship because this one was so shitty, not wanting to get hurt again, not wanting to be vulnerable again. That's the problem. Coming to terms with the fact that if you engage in a spiritual understanding of your life, you will be led to a spiritual engagement in your life. You being stuck in your humanness and stuck in your mind are preventing a change. Preventing a change. Yeah, look, the alchemist in reverse, right? You're not manifesting right. <laughs> you ain't doing it right, Taurus. You're not manifesting right. Because guess what? The magician is lesson one. One, look, lesson one of everything. The alchemist, the magician. Lesson one of everything. What is lesson one? Where your mind goes, your reality becomes. Period. 
whether you like it or not, whether you realize it or not, whether it's in your best interest or not, where your mind goes, it will become your reality. And in your subconscious mind, you are ruminating on saltiness and sorrow and grief and pain. How are you going to manifest a beautiful life if you keep manifesting pain from the past over and over and over again? If you don't take accountability for the bad choices that you've made in your life? The seven of wands, this is your challenge. Your challenge lies in your mind, Taurus. The ace of wands inspired new passionate beginnings, creation, in, you, in the guts, in the, in the inside, this Ace of Wands is the feeling that you get when you meet someone that you connect with. That's what the Ace of Wands is. It's that internal goosebump feeling. And Source wants to bring it into your life. It's waiting for you. It, it's literally waiting for you. The Emperor in Reverse. Emperor in Reverse you know, I think that this card right here is a couple of things. I think it represents your inflexibility to let go of the past in order to manifest your future. I think this card indicates that you need to have, that you don't have self-discipline right now. You are letting life create you instead of you creating your life. I think this emperor in reverse represents you being out of control. Out of control of what? Of your manifestation. Out of control of your well-being. The emperor in reverse also denotes to me that this is the ideology that you are holding on to. Everyone is going to hurt me. Everyone is going to screw it up somehow, some way. Maybe you don't trust your own judgment that you can choose someone, but you don't really have to trust, trust your own judgment if you're letting your intuition lead you, if you're letting the universe divinely orchestrate the steps of your path, because when you come into contact with this person, you will know it. Not everyone is an egocentric, self-centered fucker. Not everyone is. But your experiences have led you to believe that everyone is. I, I also want to point out this emperor in reverse could be deep-rooted daddy issues, male or female. This could be deep-rooted daddy issues. Perhaps your dad was a loser. Doesn't mean he was a bad guy. Doesn't mean you can't love him maybe he was a loser and you are if you're in male or female and you are um stuck in a mentality of i'll never be anything but a loser i don't know but this has a lot of indications as to why you are here eight of pentacles says work this out Work this out. Work out your daddy issues. Men have daddy issues too, oftentimes more than women do. Work out your daddy issues. Compound all of the lessons from your past so you can build a solid future. Uh-huh. Take accountability. Work it out. To the aid of swords in reverse. And again, stop being tied up in your head and loosen the mental so you can have a new perspective. Nine of Swords filled with anxiety and despair. The Empress in Reverse leads you to being, again, just like that Emperor in Reverse, out of control. See, the Empress is Lesson 3 of everything. The Magician is Lesson 1. What you think about comes about. Period. Lesson two is your intuition, and the high priestess is right over here on the bottom of the deck, okay? Lesson two is where your intuition is guiding you is the path of your best and highest good. The empress in the upright, she understands that if she will put her thoughts in line with where her guts are telling her to go, she cannot fail. She is the seedbed of all creation in life. She is about abundance and wisdom and connection between spirit and matter. Mm -hmm. She understands that where her mind goes, her life becomes. So she consciously chooses to manifest her mind in line with her intuition. 
and she is infallible. But in the reverse, your mind, which is stuck in anxiety and despair, is running you. Life is happening to you. You are not happening to your life. And that's a problem. The Empress in reverse to the Emperor in reverse also indicates to me that there was a bad situation back here. Prince of Wands, get ready though. Take some inspired action to understand the things that I am telling you, the things that these cards are telling you. Dana's not telling you jack squat. These cards are telling you the story that I am reading to you. Take some inspired action to go in a different direction. Princess of Pentacles, because you cannot manifest here. You cannot manifest the ground that you are trying to sow your, the seeds of your life upon is barren, cracked, and dry. How is anything supposed to grow? The Seven of Swords, you can't take a shortcut. You can't not deal with this over here, this pain over here, and have this. You can't. It's impossible because they will not intervene in your free will. And if your free will is ruminating on pain and sorrow and grief, then guess what your life becomes? Pain and sorrow and grief. The Seven of Swords, you cannot get away with that. You must death. Bring it to an end and deal with it once and for all. When you deal with it once and for all, it sets the, the, the it opens the door for all of this fabulous relationship to come through to you. It's an absolute ending of the old you and an absolute beginning to a new you. It is a transformation of your life and that is what is set in motion in the universe around you. You just have to grab it with your free will. Four of Pentacles, pull yourself together. Judgment in reverse and take accountability for the bad decisions that you have made in your life, the bad choices that you have made in your life. To the chariot and put in the self control, the willpower, and the determination to do what it is that you need to do so the universe can escort you to the new trail of your life, the new path of your life, the divinely orchestrated path of your life versus the human ego path of your life. I do want to point out judgment in reverse is also about a lot of self-doubt. And you do have a lot of self-doubt about this whole situation that happened up here. But you can change that inside of yourself. The Ace of Cups in reverse, repressed emotions, hurt feelings, the Prince of Pentacles in reverse, been stuck in that for way, 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 way too long. Why the Ten of Pentacles to the lovers in reverse? Because you thought that this situation up here was going to be your future. But you chose that situation up there out of your humanness, out of your flesh and your ego with zero consideration for your spiritual journey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the lovers in reverse being Major Arcana says this was not a divinely orchestrated relationship in the first place. So why are you lamenting about it? Let it go. To the Princess of Swords, again, planting new seedlings of thoughts in your mind. Eight of Cups, knowing that this was no good to begin with because it wasn't divinely orchestrated. Move on from, from, from the sad emotions. There's better out there. Six of Swords in reverse. Move on from the mental baggage that is the weight around the ankles of this fool. The Four of Swords come to terms just like this Three of Swords come to terms with the grief, the sorrow, and the pain in your mind. You see, the Four of Swords comes out of the Three of Swords. These three swords in this card right here are hanging on the wall behind him right here. He's coming to terms with it. He's picking up the Fourth Sword. He's bringing stability to his mindset. The Five of Swords, because he knows that this white-knuckle grip on some kind of shoulda, coulda, woulda mentality is no bueno for his future. 
this white knuckle grip on an egocentric, self-centered perspective of what something should have been with absolutely zero regard to your soul path, that's the problem. The King of Wands in reverse also represents, just like that Emperor in reverse, the egocentric, self-centered person that you chose in your past. The Prince of Swords in reverse. Um, you didn't know then what you know now, because if you're watching this tarot card reading, you either have a sense of some kind of an awakening coming towards you, you're beginning to awaken, or you are taking the steps to awaken, because I will tell you right here, right now, today, if you are a truly enlightened, awakened person who is walking your soul path, these tarot card readings that you're watching to get some kind of information about what the hell is going on would make a hill of beans to you because when you are truly deeply awakened you will spend your time learning how to grow instead of trying to make sense of the past true 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 these general tarot card readings that y'all are watching on youtube are nothing but complete and total mind fucks Get it straight. Get your own damn cards read so you can come to terms with yourself once and for all. And stop finding yourself in the place of the victim in every general tarot card reading that you're watching. Mm -hmm. Stop it. You are accountable for the decisions that you have made in your life. And you are accountable for the decisions that you will make in your future. And if you will open up your soul, get out of your flesh understanding and step into a soul understanding. You see, your soul was here way before this meat suit was. Your soul knows where you came from and it knows where you're going. Your intuition is your soul speaking to your consciousness, trying to point you in the direction of your soul path. But the mind overrides the intuition every single time. Get your mind straight. Get your mind clear. And listen. Follow your intuition. Manifest according to your intuition. And you will have a life beyond your wildest dreams. If you continue to manifest towards your ego understanding of the way that life should be, you will experience... Uh, you will experience disaster after disaster after disaster. It's just the way that it works. It is. It is. And I know that's going to piss somebody off out there, but it's true. If you don't step into your soul path, you are on your own. And that is the brass tacks, God's honest truth. They cannot intervene in your free will. And if your free will is focused on what it is you can get, not focusing on tending to any emotional woundings or issues that you have from your past and just perpetuating a human cycle over and over and over and over again, then so be it. They cannot make you understand your soul, but it's there and it's speaking to you if you will quiet your mind and listen to it and then point your mind in the direction of your intuition your life will be beautiful. Now, granted, can you ever have, you know, broken legs, car accidents, people die, bad things happen? Sure, we're all a part of this material, physical world that we live in. But you will handle all of that in a much different way when you are walking in your soul path and not in your flesh path. Death, for example. My sister died a few months ago. Cancer. Y'all might remember me putting that out there. It's okay. I don't need a bunch of I'm sorry's in the comments. I really don't. Because everybody, everybody is, oh my gosh, she was such an important part of my life. Now I have this empty space in my life. What am I going to do without her in my life? I need her in my life. The whole everything was about them. When in fact, the death card, the death card, death was a release for her. I got chastised because I was like, this is not sad. This is actually beautiful. Did she get shorted? No, she didn't. Because now she's on to her next biggest and highest and, and, and or she's on to the next leg of her soul journey. It wasn't sad to me. But everybody else was hysterical. 
And I got chastised because I didn't think it was such a sad thing. It's the difference between a soul understanding and a flesh understanding. Understand? It's important. It's important. If you continue to choose out of your flesh nature, you will continue to choose egocentric, self-centered people, and your needs will not be met. Ever. Eight of Wands. Change. Change. Go in a different direction and seek deep, deep change. The only way we can deeply change is to unsew what it is that we were told we were supposed to be and re sew what it is we know we are supposed to be to the world. This brings an end, an end to all of this up here. It brings an end to your limited human understanding and it puts you on a soul path. It's the end of the old cycle, the beginning of the new cycle. You have learned everything in some form or fashion about life with all of the lessons that precede this world card. It's the last card in the, in the major arcana. You have the tools. Look, last card, first card. You have the tools to step into a brand new beginning, a brand new journey. Follow your intuition. Follow an awakening. If you have a curiosity about spirituality and all that kind of stuff, stop watching tarot card readings and start listening to some things that are going to, that are going to facilitate soul growth. Get your own cards read once and for all by me or anybody else. I don't, I don't care as long as you get what you need. Figure out what it is that is your life and move forward. Bring it to an end. Eight of Wands. Again, it's like the third time this card is here. Maybe even the fourth time. Third time. Move. Third time? No, I only have two deck of cards. Second time. Okay? Move forward. Movement, action, and change in your life. Brings you to the Nine of Cups. Wishes fulfilled. Comfort, happiness, satisfaction. The filling of the desires of of your soul. Boom. In some kind of significant, significant, divinely orchestrated relationship in your life. Divinely orchestrated relationship in your life. Look at how beautiful this is. Even the devil in reverse is beautiful. Look at how beautiful this is, Taurus. I mean, it's just absolutely phenomenal bottom of the deck bottom of the deck the high priestess what have, I, what have I been saying listen to your soul your soul is soft your soul speaks gently to you your ego is loud and boisterous and demanding and in control but your, your intuition is going to be soft it's going to be a soft poke a soft poke because they're not going to intervene in your free will they will suggest to you, they will lead you, they will guide you, but they will never force you like your ego will, right? Your intuition is leading you towards closure, towards healing, towards completion of this cycle. Follow it. Settle your mind, quiet your ego, and listen to where this is telling you to go, to the star. Because they are leading you to your path and your purpose. Your path and your purpose. Your soul's path. Your soul's purpose. Your soul's path and your soul's purpose is some kind of significant relationship where someone is going to hold space with you while you grow and learn and transform. Ace of Swords, get your mind in the game. It all starts in your mind, Taurus. Everything starts in your mind. And you have the power to choose what kind of thoughts you allow into your subconscious mind. To the Ten of Cups. And this transformation is going to lead you 
to exactly what it is your soul desires. So you can be happy and overflowing onto anyone and everyone around you so you can help humanity through the crazy journey of this humanness that we're trying to navigate. Ten of Wands in reverse. Dump this heavy, heavy burden that you have been carrying. The Devil in reverse. Again, release your limiting beliefs. Detach yourself from some kind of toxic behavior in your life. The Two of Pentacles in reverse. Because it and only it is what is keeping you off balance. Up until now, this tells me that you have not prioritized anything that I have said here. It's time to prioritize. It's time to step into this spiritual awakening that someone out there is about to have, having, or is going through right now. That's what these cards want to say for you, Taurus. Looky there. Came out before I even asked. Picked the deck up and boom, it was there. Anything else that needs to be said here? Where does pride come from? It comes from the ego. Look at that. And change. Wow. Cards just blow my mind. Every time I sit down to these cards, they blow my mind. Let's read pride. It's 19. Let's read it. Let's read it. Pride. Okay? Remember, pride has no place in a soul journey. Pride is a creation of the ego. This card indicates a need to swallow your pride to improve your current situation and your quality of life. By admitting when you're wrong and choosing to see another's point of view, whether this person is right or wrong, you raise your vibration, which brings you closer to your dreams. Oh, maybe I have pissed a lot of you off out there. Maybe your pride and your ego is flared up right now and you're about to leave me all kinds of salty comments. And if you do, I will just block you from the channel. I don't play that at all. Perhaps I have infuriated someone out there. Interesting. This card indicates a need to swallow your pride to improve your current situation and your quality of life. By admitting when you're wrong and choosing to see another's point of view, whether that person is right or wrong, you raise your vibration, which brings you closer to your dreams. The bottom line is, if you want to create a happy, harmonious life, you must, need, you must let go of your need to be right or in control. To overpower, belittle, or punish another goes against the nature of your soul and takes you out of alignment. Yet when you have the courage to own up to your mistakes, you align yourself with Source. Admitting when you're wrong builds character, inner strength, and self-esteem. It opens the door for resolution and creates better relationships with others. Stubbornness and pride will get you nowhere, but humility and compromise bring you closer to the realization of your dreams. Uh-huh. Rather than go... Oops, I'm sorry. In order to improve your current situation, you're being asked to adjust to and harmonize with the natural rhythm and cycles of your life. Cycles that are encouraging you to rise above your ego. Rather than go it alone... Rather than go it alone because you're too stubborn to back down, you must cooperate with others. When swallowing your pride, you can make your dreams come true. Boom, Taurus. Boom. Boom, boom, boom. And five. This is change. Five is the number of change. This card indicates a time of expected and unexpected change when anything can happen and usually does. By drawing this card, you're being encouraged to think of your life as an adventure in which exciting opportunities could appear at any moment. Rather than fearing the unfamiliar and unknown, you are urged to embrace expansion, movement, and change. This is a time to go with the flow and open yourself to opportunities that will improve your quality of life. Anything is possible and the wheels are set in motion. The wheels, where's those wheel of fortunes? The wheels are set in motion. So be sure to play your part by moving closer to your dreams. You may be called upon to make a change in your mindset, relationships, residence, lifestyle, or career. Wherever a shift is needed to serve your greater good, it's time to broaden your horizons and re-spark your passion for life. Procrastination and resistance, procrastination, resistance, and fear only take you out of alignment, so surrender yourself to the opportunities that are about to present themselves. Trust that you're divinely loved and guided, and you will be shown the way. Amen, Taurus. 
Amen. I sure do hope this helps someone. Namaste.